YouTube. Sticking with the theme of Aluminum Max, let's take another look at another one. This is a unit that has entered my collection a few days ago. This is a PowerBook G4. I've had a couple of these in the past couple of years and always ended up getting rid of them. But uh, I definitely want this one to stay in the collection. So this is one of the very first uh, aluminum power books. I also have a titanium, I'll get that in a little bit to compare. But um, yeah, this is one of the earlier uh, aluminum uh, power book G4s. This is the 2003 Firewire 800 model. We'll get to that once we do the port overview. And uh, it basically kept most of the design of the titanium the same. So a central button here for the latch, which is magnetic. A slot loading uh, optical drive right here. And overall dimensions are also very, very similar. It is a thick boy, if you want to call it that. And uh, this uh, specific one is in near mint condition. I'll uh, push it to a little bit closer here. As you are probably able to tell, this lid is nearly spotless. There's only a scratch, you can barely see it, right there. And that is literally it. It is in that good of a shape. Of course, there are some more scuffs on the bottom, as there usually are. As you can see, there is a big scratch right here. There is a scratch right there. A few little nicks, but that's basically all there is to it. And the battery still holds a charge. It's not much, it is just enough to actually get some machine booted into the OS, and then you can plug in your. Uh, your power and it's fine, but uh, other than that, that's pretty neat. The previous owner really, really pampered this machine, and that's also why I ended up getting it. Uh, this was uh, put up for auction, and I ended up being the highest bidder. This cost me 67 euros, and I think that's a pretty good deal for uh, a power book in this good of a condition. All right, we're zoomed out now a little bit. And now on the right hand side here we have the titanium power book and on the left obviously the aluminum power book. In terms of height the aluminum power book is slightly thicker because it has a more rounded top. This one is completely flat but as I said the basic overall design is similar. This one is sliding around a little bit and again magnetic latch. Also a 15 inch display. Let's take a look at the port selection. On the titanium power book, obviously we get nothing. This is just, I think an IR receiver of some sort. And uh, a vent and a Kensington lock. On the left hand side of the power book, G4 titanium, uh, I mean aluminum, getting a mixed in <laughs> around already. We get a vast majority of ports here. Of course, on the titanium, they're on the back. On these, they are on the sides. We have a Kensington lock right there. USB 2.0, I think. Must be, in 2003. Firewire 400, Firewire 800, which designates the Firewire 800 model. Gigabit Ethernet, very nice. Uh, video output, I think it's S-Video. And here we have a DVI port. And on the right hand side of the machine, we find the power input, the modem, another USB 2.0 port, a line in and line out, PCM serial card bus slot, and that is it. On the titanium, to go way back in time, we find everything behind this neatly covered door. We have Firewire 400, uh, 100 megabit Ethernet. Or was this one gigabit Ethernet already? I forgot actually, this is a... Um, I think this is the 500 megahertz model. I did a video on it many months ago, I think. If I even did. If I didn't, I definitely need to make a video on this. But uh, anyway, USB 1.1 ports here. A VGA port. Another is video out and the modem here. Or this is actually the IR blaster. But uh, yeah, here it's neatly covered behind the door. This is also a PowerBook Titanium that is in reasonably good condition. The top lid is merely smudged and needs some cleaning. It's been in a box for months. The bottom is very nice as well. This has no problems with uh, 
the bottom case coming off due to delamination of the materials. It only has some very bad paint problems. But anyway, let's get back to the aluminum power book. Right here. So let's move in a little bit closer. That's the way we like to do things around here. There we go. Again, a lovely looking machine. This one is nearly spotless. There is zero wear on the keyboard. There's also absolutely zero wear on the trackpad or the button. Palm rests are spotless. Overall, a very, very nice machine. The main reason I like the PowerBook G4 in the first generation of the MacBook Pro, so the pre-unibody so much, is the keyboard. I've gone over this a couple of times in the past, but I really, really like these keyboards. Some people might find them a bit mushy, but I personally can type really, really quickly on these. I like the feel of these uh, keyboards. Very tactile. Definitely a, a win in my book. All right, enough chit chat. Let's turn it on. Because supposedly it works. <laughs> I know it works. I loaded a fresh copy of OS 10 Tiger on this. Just uh, while it is booting up, which takes a little while. Let's go over the specifications of this particular one. So this is the Fireware 800 model. It has a 1.25 GHz PowerPC G4 CPU, 512 MB of memory, which in this case is DDR333 uh, MHz, so PC2700. It can be upgraded to 2 GB. I've ordered some, uh, some more memory for it. I didn't have any laying around anymore. It has the original 80 GB hard drive, and it has the optional backlit keyboard as well, which is very nice. So this was basically the high-end model of uh, late 2003 to early 2004. And here we are, booting into OS X Tiger. I've updated it completely. It is now running... Alright, this mouse doesn't actually track on this surface. That's a bit of a bummer. Oh well. It is running the latest version. frame a bit. So just 10, 4, 11, 512 megabytes of RAM. The graphics in these are slightly different from the newer models. These come with the Radeon 9600 mobile with 64 megabytes of VRAM. It does have optional airport, so it does have Wi-Fi. It has Bluetooth, which was very novel for 2003. It has the super drive, so we have both CD and DVD burning capabilities. And the hard drive is from Hitachi, and it is a 5400 RPM IDE hard drive, 80 gigabytes in size. I will be upgrading this machine to an SSD uh, later on. I have a uh, converter kit ordered for it. So that should be pretty good. I also do intend of uh, dual booting it with Leopard as soon as the SSD arrives. It is a bit uh, too slow with these specifications to do that properly. So once I have the RAM and the SSD, I'll uh, set up a dual boot between Tiger and Leopard. And uh, that should be pretty good. So just some uh, small test things here. Here, I open up Word for Mac. This is Office 2004. Tiger will run up to Office 2008, but it is really painfully slow on uh, basically any machine I've tried it on. Office 2004 is really a lot faster. And uh, yeah, it really shows uh, how badly optimized Office 2008 really was. But yeah, Word 2004 opens up reasonably quickly. Obviously, we have uh, the iLife suite. So we have iPhoto here. I've got uh, iLife 05 installed because that's what I have a DVD for. And that works nicely. And it doesn't seem to make that much of a difference which brightness I set it to. So yeah, I guess it is safe to zoom out at this point. So there's really not all that much to show you at the moment about this particular machine. 
It is a very fresh install of Tiger, only installed it two days ago. And uh, it's running fine, honestly. I also installed Classic for OS 9 apps. And they run fine. I've actually played some SimCity 3000 on this, which is not as bad as you'd expect. <laughs> but uh, yeah, loading new websites with Safari 4 is absolutely a nightmare. Uh, I have 10 for a Fox on there, but it's pretty slow. So, this is not really a machine that you can really still use for some things. One thing it is amazing for, like I said, I really like this keyboard, so typing on it is great. But uh, other than that, it's really relegated to running old games or old apps. But going online is definitely not one of its strong suits anymore. But hey, it's 17 years old at this point. So, what would you expect, right? And I think that basically concludes the video on my new 15-inch PowerBook G4 Firewire 800 model. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.